Hey guys, welcome to your next project. So in this one, we're going to create a pretty cool mobile navigation effect, responsive navigation, hamburger menu, and we branded it Netflix mobile navigation, but it's just because of the color scheme. It's not the actual Netflix menu uh, as far as I know, but we basically just have a little hamburger menu up here, a little hamburger icon, I should say. And if we click it, we get this cool effect where there's three separate parts that come out in a transition and some of them have delays. So we have the black, red, white, and they come out and then when it goes in white, red, black. So it's just a nice little effect. It's a clean looking menu. Um, obviously you could put whatever you want in the page. We're just going to put the logo and some text, but this would be whatever you would want to put in the page. Um, and of course, if we make this really small, still, you know, works the same way. Looks good. I think there's a minimum width of 320 or so, so it should look good on, you know, smartphones and so on. So that's what we'll be building. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so we're going to get started on our Netflix branded navigation here. So I have my project starter. I do have a link to the Font Awesome CDN because we will be using two icons from Font Awesome. So down in the body, well, actually let's do the title first. So in the title here, I'm going to change this to Netflix mobile navigation because that's the name of the project and then down here we're going to first have our open button so let's add a button here and this is going to have two classes nav dash btn which is going to be on both the open and close and then open dash btn and we're going to use an icon with the class of fas and then fa dash bars which will give us a hamburger menu hamburger menu icon So under that, we're going to have the image, the, the logo, the Netflix logo is going to go in the middle of the page. It's also going to go in the nav itself. So we'll have two of them. But let's say image with the class of a logo and the alt will just say logo. And then the source is going to come from a, a remote link. You can, of course, download any logo or any image and put it in here. But I'm just going to link to this Netflix logo. And then let's do a paragraph with the class of text. And I just want that to say mobile navigation. So this is just the content that's going to go in the middle. And right now the logo is huge. In fact, I'm just going to add in the style sheet real quick logo. And let's say with 150 pixels. All right, just so we can actually see stuff. Now underneath that under the paragraph is where we're going to have our navigation. There's going to be three separate parts that that slide out. You're going to have the, the red, white and black. So what we're going to have what we're going to do is have three nav classes. This first one is also going to have nav dash black. And then inside that we'll have another nav class with a class of nav dash red and then another one with nav and let's do nav dash black, not black. We already did black white. So the white is where the actual content is going to go. The the links and stuff. Um, first thing I'm going to put in here is the close button. So that'll have a class of nav BTN just like the open. And then let's do close dash BTN as well. And we'll use FAS FA dash times. Okay, so there's our close button and underneath the button is going to be another image for our logo. So I'm just going to grab this here and put that here. Okay, and then we want our our links or our menu items. So we're going to have a, a UL an unordered list with a class of list. And let's do an LI here with a link inside of it. Link doesn't have to go anywhere. And this will say teams. We're going to have three here to begin with. So teams locations and uh, let's say life at Netflix. Now within this, we're going to have a nested UL. So let's put another list item here. But inside that we'll have a UL and a list item with a link. And this is going to say Netflix culture memo. We're going to make all these uppercase using CSS. So it doesn't matter if you make these lowercase or uppercase. So let's see, we have that and then we have work life balance. Uh, then we're going to do oops, inclusion 
and diversity and blog. All right, so there's our links. So it doesn't look very good, but we're going to go ahead and style it now. So let's jump in here. And I'm not sure if we'll get to all the CSS in this video. We might have to do the rest in the next one. But let's start here with the font. I'm going to use the Mooley font. So let's say question mark family and set that to M U L I. And then we'll add that down here. M U L I good display flex column. That's good um, height 100 viewport heights. We don't really need an overflow and then we don't really need margin zero because we want it to be, you know, right at the edge here. So that should be good for the body. The this text that's in the main part of the page. I want that to be uppercase. So we're going to say text transform set that to uppercase. And then that's I mean, that's pretty much it for the inner page. Of course, you could put whatever you want here. So we just have, you know, the where is it up here, the image and the text, but you would have your page content here and then have the menu down here. So next thing I want to do is the nav button, which is this one here. I want to position it up here, make it look a little better. So let's add nav dash BTN and let's take away the border. So border none. And, and this applies to both buttons. So border none and then the background, we want to get rid of that gray. So we're going to set it to transparent. We're also going to make sure the cursor is a pointer and let's set the font size to a little bit bigger, 20 pixels. So that's the nav button, which is on both. Now let's do just the open button. So open dash BTN. And for that, we want to position that fixed within the viewport. So position fixed and I want it to be 10 pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the left, which is going to place it right up here in the corner. So for the nav, now remember this three navs here. So we're going to style the nav and then each color because it's going to come out to a certain point so we can see all three colors. So let's do the nav first. So the nav class. And that's going to be position fixed. And we want it to be right right in the top corner. So top zero, left zero. Okay, so you're going to see that move up if you save. And then the height of this is going to be the, the entire viewport. So 100 viewport heights. All right. And then as far as you know, the, the sliding effect here, the way we, we do that is with a transition on the transform property using translate X because translate X affects, uh, you know, moving along the X axis, which is the horizontal axis. So let's add a transform here and let's say we want to translate on the X axis and to start off, we want it to be way over to the left off the screen, which will do negative 100%, which brings it off the screen. Now, to have it come in, what's going to happen is we're going to add the class of visible to each of these. I'm just going to add it manually now, but later on um, we'll remove this and we'll just have it done with JavaScript. But just so we can see it, we're going to set visible on all three of those. Make sure it's on all three. And then what we'll do is take nav. And if it has a class of visible, then I'm going to copy this transform here and set it back to its normal position, which is zero. So now we can see it because the visible is on all three of those. Now we want it to have a smooth transition when it switches from this to this and back. So we'll set a transition on the transform property and let's do 0.3 seconds for the duration. So how long it takes and then ease in out. All right. So I think that That's all we're going to do in this video. In the next one, we'll continue with the styling and then we'll add the JavaScript so we can make the, the open and close buttons function. All right, so now we're going to finish most of the CSS and then add the JavaScript for the button functionality. And then I want to add some other effects later so we can delay because we have three boxes, the red, white and black, and I want them to come out like one after another. So we will add some transition delays. 
But for now, let's finish the basic styling. So we're going to add nav black. Remember, there's black, red and white. So for black, let's set the background color to RGB and let's do three, four for black. I'm sorry for red three, one. So just really low numbers. It's not quite black, but it's dark. We can't see it yet because we want to add a width. Let's do 60%. And then I want to add a max width of 480. So it shouldn't come out past 480 no matter what. And then a min width. So the min width will do 320. All right. And then, yeah, that should do it for now. So then the red, let's do nav dash red. And we're going to set our background color for that to RGB and then pass in for red 229. So really high number and then 9 and 20. Okay, now we can't see that just yet. So let's let's add a width of 95 percent. Okay, so now you can see the red comes out, but you can still see the black behind it on the side here, which is what we want. And then for the white part, so let's say nav dash white. For that, the background color is going to be pure white, so I'll just use hexadecimal. And we want it to come out, so let's say with 95%. And now we have what looks like a, a black and red stripe here. So when it comes out and goes in, it's going to do it at different rates. We're going to add a delay. But like I said, I just want to get the basic uh, styling down first. So I'm also going to add padding here since this is wrapping the content. We'll do 40 pixels padding, move everything in. Let's position this relative because we are going to want to position the close button absolute within it. And yeah, that's it for now. And then for the close button, let's say close dash BTN. We're going to position that absolute and where I want to put this within the nav white container is 40 pixels from the top and 30 pixels from the right. So now you can see that let's we're also going to make it a little lighter by adding an opacity value of 0.3, which will fade it out a bit. Now, let's see, the, this is what we have left is the list. So let's say for the class of list, which is the the initial UL. And I want to get rid of any bullet points. So list style type, we're going to set that to none. And the padding, I'm going to get rid of the default padding, so padding zero. And then the list items, so list LI. I want to spread them out. So margin 20 pixels on the top and bottom. That'll spread them out. Then we're going to do the links. So the LI a tags and let's set the color of that. Um, the color I'm going to set to RGB. The same black that we have for the background of one of the navs. And then let's make the font size. Uh, font size is going to be 14 pixels. I've got my semicolon here. Okay, and then we want to get rid of the text underline. So text decoration is going to be none. And let's also make it uppercase. So text transform. I'm going to set that to uppercase. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we do have a, a UL nested within the list and you can see it has the bullet points here. So let's say list. And then a UL within the list will set the list style type to none. And for our padding left, let's say padding left, we're going to set that to 20 pixels because we do want it to stick out a bit. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. And that's most of the CSS. Now I want to jump into the JavaScript here. And there's basically three things you want to grab the open button, the close button and the nav. Although we have multiple classes of nav, one on each of these colors. So let's first bring in, let's say open underscore BTN and we're going to use document dot query selector. And that has a class of open dash 
BTN. So it's just a convention that Florin and I like to use is dashes or hyphens in CSS. And then if you're going to create a variable here, you can't use a hyphen. So you would use an underscore or sometimes you'll see, you know, the camel case. But in this case, we're just going to do underscore and then we're going to get the close button as well. And you could use an underscore in your classes. I just don't like doing that. So close button. Now for the nav, we have multiple of those. So what that means is we have to use query selector all and we want to grab the uh, class of nav and that will give us a, a node list that we can basically loop through. So let's take the open button and let's add an event listener, right? So add event listener. We want to listen for a click event. When that happens, we'll fire off a function and uh, we don't have to use curly braces here, but I'm going to just to make it neater. So we'll take our navs and we're going to loop through. So for each because there's multiple navs and we'll say for each nav element, we want to take that nav element and we want to add the visible class. So nav L dot class list dot add and we want to add the class of visible. All right, because we're adding it on multiple navs. That's why we have to loop through the node list here. Now, close button is going to be pretty much the same thing, except we're removing the class. So I'm going to put that in here and grab the close button add a click event. And then for each nav, we want to then remove the class of visible. All right, so I'll save that and I'm going to go ahead and delete these visible classes that I just, you know, hard coded in here. So I'll get rid of those and it should now be off the screen. Now if I click, it's going to go ahead and open. If I click the X, it closes. Now it doesn't have the effect that I want. I want it to be. I want the three parts to come out kind of separately to give it a cool little effect. So in our style sheet here, we're going to add on to. Let's see. So on the nav black, basically, we're going to just add transition delays on certain colors. So nav black right here, let's say we want to add a transition delay, which means that it'll just wait however long we, we put here before it actually fires off. So I'm going to delay it by 0.4 seconds for the black. OK, so now when we close. You can see the black takes a little longer. Now we also want to add a delay or, or I should say remove the delay on the visible for black. So what we'll do is say nav dash black. And if it if it has the class of visible, then we want the transition delay to be zero seconds. All right. So it comes right out and then it, it kind of lags when it goes back in. And so on the red. We have nav red right here. Let's add a transition delay, which is going to be a little faster than the black because it's it doesn't stick out as much. So let's do instead of what do we do for for the black point four. Let's do point two seconds for that. And now you can see it has that effect. Where, it, you know, the red goes in and then the black goes in. Now, when it's visible on nav red, so now I've read visible. Basically, when we open it, we want to add a transition delay of 0.2 seconds. So now when I open, you can see that the red. Has a little delay. Now we want to do the same for the white because you can see when it opens, the red and the white come in at the same exact time. I don't want that. I want the white to, to fan in as well. So let's go to nav white and when it's not visible, we're going to set the transition delay to zero seconds, but on the visible. So nav dash white and when it, when I say visible, that is basically when it opens. Um, so in the visible, let's do a transition delay of 0.4 seconds. OK, so now you can see black, red, white when it goes in white, red, black. So it's just the timing of the transition delay. 
All right, and that that's pretty much it. So it's just a cool little effect. It's it's of course it's responsive. You know, small screens. This will work fine. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna be it for this project, guys. Hopefully you liked it, and obviously you can brand it as something else. Just Netflix seemed to go with the colors. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project.